how would this guitar sound if it would be in a true quantum state? And what does this have to do with the YouTuber Mark Rober, who claims he built the world's smallest violin? I'm Mark Rober and I made the world's smallest violin. No, 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 not this one. This one, the world's actual smallest violin, about 10 times smaller than the one from Mark Rober. And of course you can't see it here, so let's take a closer look at a scanning electron microscope image. One of the strings of the violin is about as long as one of your hairs is wide. And the strings itself are much thinner and wider than that. Only a few hundred nanometers, roughly the size of an average virus. And to play it and to listen to it, I need a laser. So why am I telling you all of this? Believe it or not, this little guy has a lot to do with cutting edge quantum science. Hi, I'm Corby and I'm doing my PhD here in the field of optomechanics at the Walter Meissner Institute in Munich. Welcome to my lab. In everyday life, you see different systems interact with each other a lot, exchanging energy back and forth between them. Like, for example, you're playing the guitar. Plugging it into an amp isn't just about getting it louder. It's about transferring the motion of the string into an electric signal and then via the amplifier back into sound again. In physics, coupling means letting two different systems interact with each other and influence each other. So in the hybrid system, we then benefit from the unique properties of the two different objects and depending on how strong they are coupled to each other, they interact differently. One can couple the two systems to one another in many, many different ways. In my case, we use so-called optomechanical coupling. And the word sounds complicated, but it already tells you a lot. Opto, so we have some, some form of light, some form of optical resonator and mechanics. So we have a mechanical resonator, like for example, a guitar string. You can imagine the optical resonator as two mirrors and the light in it bounces back and forth between the two mirrors. And similar to an organ pipe where the length of the organ pipe tells you the sound it makes, so its resonance frequency. The distance between these two mirrors tells you also the resonance frequency, so the color of light, so to say, um, of this optical resonator. The special thing now is that the mirrors are not static. So one of them is fixed, but the one in this hand, this one can move. It is, for example, mounted to a spring. So when the light hits this mirror, the photons they have momentum, so, so some form of movement. They push the mirror back a bit. And because it's mounted to a spring, it can move back. This now changes the distance between the two mirrors. And with that also its resonance frequency. So say the color of the light that lives in this optical resonator. In my research, I use a very similar approach. But instead of these two mirrors, I have a superconducting quantum circuit. And instead of the spring, I have a tiny violin string. We call these systems electromechanical. And the cool thing is that we can fabricate them using state-of-the-art technologies. So that means we can make them small, we can make them compact, we can make them compatible with quantum computers. We can use these systems, for example, as very precise force or acceleration sensors. Or we use them as some kind of quantum memory or hard drive, where we can store a state from a quantum computer for a longer time. In a typical superconducting quantum computer, a qubit lives for maybe one or two milliseconds. The mechanical system, the tiny violin string, can store the state up to 30 times longer than that until it's needed again by the quantum computer and retrieved. And this is how it really looks under a scanning electron microscope. You can see the long wiggly line. This is the superconducting quantum circuit where light at microwave frequency resonates. And then at the very end, you see the tiny violin string. But to really unlock the powers of quantum physics, we need to go beyond just classical vibration, like in our guitar at the start, where the string makes a sound. This string needs to be in a so-called non-classical state, a true quantum state. But 
what does this even mean? Simply put, in classical physics, everything has a definite position and momentum. In quantum physics, things are more complicated. As you might have already heard, Heisenberg uncertainties principle tells you that you can never ever exactly know where and how fast a quantum object is, like for example an electron or a photon. This can be imagined as a blob, a circle like this one here. But we can squeeze that circle, so that means it gets longer in one direction, but shorter in the other one. And if we measure in this shorter direction, then we are more precise. But it can get even weirder than that. The tiny violin string can be in a superposition. So that means, classically, the vibration, it just goes up and down, up and down, up and down. But in a superposition, the string vibrates both up and down and down and up at the same time. Similar to the famous Schrödinger's cat, which can be both alive and dead at the same time. If we observe such a superposition, it's a smoking gun. So that means we can be sure that we manage to prepare our tiny violin string in a real quantum state with which you can do real quantum physics. To easily generate these true quantum states, we need our two systems to be coupled very strongly to one another. We would call this single photon strong coupling. But this is very, very challenging in practice to achieve. So in my day-to-day -day work, I spend a lot of time optimizing the design, the fabrication, and all of these tiny details. So you can compare this a bit to finding a new great cake recipe. You do the same thing countless times, you bake the cake in the oven at 100 degrees, 110 degrees, 120 degrees, 180 degrees, and so on and so forth, and you look at the result and figure out which works the best. But why all the effort? Why all the optimization? Well, because it's increasingly more difficult to put an object into a true quantum state the larger the object becomes. And such a tiny nano violin string is already comparably large for a quantum system. And this is the goal of many researchers today. So to put larger and larger objects into a quantum state. Why? Because with that, you can build sensors which are much more precise than any classical sensor could be. Generally, physicists are interested by the question, at which point does quantum weirdness stop? They are interested in the boundary between the classical and the quantum world. Now, is it just a matter of scale or is there something deeper going on? And they try to reach that by putting larger and larger objects into a quantum state. And maybe one day, we can even put our guitar into a quantum state and listen to quantum music. Whatever that means in the end. Thanks for watching, stay curious and get entangled with us for more quantum science.